YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Koozie and welcome back to another Phasmophobia guide. In this guide, I'm covering all seven of the cursed possessions in detail, as well as giving you the spawn locations for every single cursed possession on every single map, okay? So this video is gonna be a little bit lengthy, but we got timestamps down below, but I wanted to make this guide because the cursed possessions are a great tool to learn uh, for helping you find the ghost room, uh, get a ghost photo, um, getting a cursed hunt so you know what type of ghost you're dealing with, etc. So. Uh, like I said, this video is going to be a little bit deep, okay, but I'm going to try to break it up and break it down as simple as you can understand. So do me a favor, before we get into it, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you want to find your way back for more content like this, you can hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to come check me out live, I do stream on Twitch, um, over on twitch.tv slash koozie. The link for that is in the description below, okay? So anyway, strap in, dude. It's going to be a long ride, but enough pitter patter chitter chatter. Let's get into it. All right, so uh, before we begin, uh, I want to show you guys my custom settings for this. This is strictly for educational purposes, okay? So, uh, for instance, I have my player speed set to, uh, like, 150. I've got infinite sprinting on uh, just so that there's as little amount of time uh, as possible um, used. Uh, I have friendly ghost on because I don't want interruptions. The only thing about the cursed possessions is that uh, when they trigger a cursed hunt, the only difference between a cursed hunt and a regular hunt is that it's 20 seconds longer than a regular hunt, okay? So that's all you have to know. So I've got hunting off, essentially. Uh, and then, obviously, I have all of the cursed possessions spawned in. The other thing, too, is that Sanity Pill Restoration is set to 100% because I just tried to do uh, another take and... Uh, I demonstrated the mirror and it broke and then I tried to use the mirror box and I couldn't a music box but I couldn't because I was at zero sanity so um we'll get to that in a minute so I've got my settings kind of in favor of this video all right so the purpose of of these settings is to show you all of the cursed possessions so I don't want to have to keep you know reloading a contract for just because I'm out of sanity you know what I mean so we got everything here and before I begin uh, I want to say that we're starting on Tanglewood, and whenever it comes time to talk about the spawns, I'm going to do Tanglewood again, um, just because people are probably going to skip to that part where I talk about the spawns, because that's that's not really covered a lot in a lot of Cursed Possession videos. You do, you do see guides where they talk about the Cursed Possessions and what they do and the details of them, but they don't really cover where they spawn on every single map. So um, when we get to that point, we're going to circle back to Tanglewood so I can cover the spawns again. Um, but before we head in there, I want to cover two majority rules. All right. The first one is that the majority of cursed possessions cost sanity to use, except the tarot cards and the monkey paw. OK, um, which brings me to my second point of you cannot use the cursed possessions aside from the monkey paw and the tarot cards if you are at zero sanity. If you try to use anything like the voodoo doll, the mirror, the music box, the summon and circle, the Ouija board at zero sanity, it's going to just break. Okay. Um, so that's good thing to know. Okay. The other thing that I want to point out is that if you have the tier three crucifix, it stops a cursed hunt. Okay. So if you want to use a cursed possession, but you don't want to be hunted right off the bat, just place one of these down in the ghost room and you'll go from there. Um, you'll be good. So uh, let's start out traveling at hyper speed here uh, with the easiest curse possession, which is the mirror. All right. The mirror is very, 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 very simple. OK. OK, grandma. Um, I, I don't think we need to use this, but literally all you do is you just pick up the mirror and you use it and it shows you the ghost room. It shows you the ghost room. That's it. Um, thing to know is that when you use the mirror, it drains your sanity at seven and a half percent per second or a minimum of 20 percent and if you're like me i think the majority of people that use the mirror are just going to hold it up for like one second and then drop it because they're like oh i recognize that room it's the nursery or whatever so just safely assume that anytime you use the mirror you've you've already lost a minimum of 20 percent sanity okay so uh the other thing to note is that breaking the mirror triggers a curse on the only way to break the mirror is to use it until it breaks essentially okay um but it triggers a curse hunt and as i stated in the settings portion um the only thing different about a curse hunt 
is that it is 20 seconds longer than a regular hunt. So on small maps, a regular hunt lasts like 30 seconds, whereas <sighs> Grandma, you are literally driving me wild. Um, I like how I said I didn't want any interruptions and Grandma is just driving me wild. Um, but on small maps, a hunt lasts about 30 seconds, whereas with a cursed hunt on a small map, it is now 50 seconds, okay? So that's all you gotta know. Um, yeah, so the mirror reveals the ghost room, okay? Next, we're gonna talk about uh, one that's a little bit in depth, but not too bad, okay? Uh, and that is the music box, okay? Um, bear with me here, I have my notes, um, so we're gonna try and stay on track. So the music box is helpful for finding the ghost room, getting a ghost event, and obviously triggering your cursed hunt. Uh, the most important thing that I could tell you about the music box is to place it. Now, when you place the music box, you won't have the holographic icon like you do uh, placing like one of your equipment items. Um, but it's just important to know that you need to place it because if you drop it, it will break the box and it will trigger a cursed hunt. OK, um, but to use it, all you got to do is you just got to have it in your hand. Do you mind? God, leave me be. OK, um, to use it, have it in your hand. And then this might be like a, it's it's a pretty active ghost. So I don't, it's not a, it's not a shade because I did a ghost event right out the rip, but we're not here to find the ghost. We're fine. We're, we're talking about curse possessions here. Okay. Have it in your hand and then activate it by just doing that. Okay. Now, obviously because I have friendly ghosts on, the ghost isn't going to hunt, but in a normal contract, the ghost would have hunted right there. So what you just saw was uh, the box trigger ghost event. So that happens whenever the ghost is five meters from the box, it will walk up to it and it will just like walk around the box and then it will hunt. Okay. Um, when that happens, when the box trigger ghost event happens, uh, it will walk for five seconds and then it will hunt. Okay. Typically, um, unless you're, you're like close to it or whatever, or the, the ghost has been walking for longer than five seconds. Um, so just know that was that an air ball or did it it turned off the breaker um where's the breaker it's down in the basement okay whatever um i need to go do that so fortunately we're traveling at hyper speed so so yeah um a couple things to note is that um when you're using the music box it drains two and a half percent sanity per second when you are within two and a half meters of the box if you stand near the, sand, the the music box for the entirety of the song, it will drain a maximum of 75% sanity, okay? A um, couple things to know is if you're dealing with the shade, the shade has a chance to, when it's doing a box trigger ghost event, it has a chance to um, appear instead of like in full form, it will appear as like a shadow, okay? Uh, the other thing to know is that the yokai, the stupid ghost, uh, must be two and a half meters from the box to do the box trigger ghost event versus five meters like every other ghost, okay? Um, so if the ghost is 20 meters away and you try to use it, um, it won't trigger the, the box event. Instead, you can just place it down and the ghost will sing from its location. Um, it's either its location or its ghost room. I think it's its ghost room. And, um, and it won't trigger a hunt. Um, the only time a curse hunt will happen, dude, this has got to be like a wraith or something, bro. It's freaking following me everywhere. Um, anywho, we can test that theory here in just a little bit. Wait, no, we can't because I don't have salt. Um, but if you are, if, if the ghost just sings, like it's 20 meters away, it won't hunt you. Um, so I like to use the music box to find the ghost room typically just because I don't want to deal with the hunt early on. Um, Let's see, anything else? Uh, so if the, the other way to trigger a curse hunt with the music box is A, if you're holding the box and the ghost is close to it, like, and you and you use it, right? If you've activated it and the ghost is close and you're holding it, the, the ghost is gonna hunt you. Uh, if the box is dropped, obviously that's not gonna trigger a hunt because it's broken now. Um, or if you are at 0% sanity, uh, you will try to use it and then it immediately just close and a curse hunt will happen. However, this is a bug. 
because unlike all the other cursed possessions, when a cursed hunt is triggered, every other hunt after that will be a cursed hunt. With the music box, if you try to use it at 0% sanity, that specific hunt will be a cursed hunt, but every other hunt after that will be a normal hunt, okay? Um, and then obviously if the ghost waltz for five seconds, for more than five seconds during a box triggered event, uh, that will trigger a cursed hunt, okay? So that is that. Let's go on to the next uh, pretty easy to understand. This is actually easier to understand than the music box, and that is the voodoo doll, okay? So the voodoo doll has 10 pins, okay? Each pin costs five sanity, okay? Um, now the pins, when you use it, it will go in at random, okay? Uh, so nine of the pins, when they go in, will trigger an interaction. This is useful for finding like evidence or just getting an interaction to figure out where the ghost is, etc. cetera. Um, so for instance, if you have like ghost riding and you're in the ghost room and you use the, and you use the voodoo doll, um, it could trigger ghost writing if the ghost has that evidence. Um, same with dots, right? Uh, but every every pin costs five sanity, and the heart pin is what triggers a cursed hunt. The only other way to trigger a cursed hunt with the voodoo doll is if you are at zero percent sanity and you try to use it. Okay, that is that's literally it for the voodoo doll. It's it's very easy to understand. Um, it's right up there with the mirror. Um, and it's just a little bit more RNG. The mirror's a, a lot more straightforward. So that is the Voodoo Doll, okay? Let's go on to the next Cursed Possession, and which is, uh, this one's about as easy to understand. Um, it's the Summoning Circle, which I need a lighter for. So let's go do that. And I might as well go pop a Sanity Pill too while I'm at it. All right, let's grab a lighter. Okay, um, so let's see here. So the summoning circle is a very easy to understand, um, but it's also kind of bad. So there's five candles. Each candle costs 16% sanity to light, okay? So the only way you're gonna get this to actually work is if you are at 100% sanity. There's the bone. Um, so what you can do is you can, um, light all of these and what will happen when you light all five is that the ghost will appear so this is a great chance to do two things it's a great chance to um uh get a ghost photo you can also place salt down before you well that was very rude you can place salt down before you light all the candles and if the ghost appears and it um doesn't step in the salt you can immediately rule like identify that it's a wraith, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the thing to know is that if you are at 0% sanity, you can't you can't light the candle. Um, obviously, it's not gonna work because I've already used this, but um, if you're at 0% sanity, it'll light and then it'll immediately go out. And there's nothing you can do uh, aside from taking sanity pills. Um, the other thing to know is that the ghost will appear like you just saw for five seconds. And then after that five seconds is up, it will start hunting you, okay? And that hunt will be a cursed hunt, okay? Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, let's move on to uh, the cursed possessions where we're getting a little bit deep here, okay? Um, first is the Ouija board, all right? Um, Ouija board, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it, okay? Because what will happen is you can use it to ask a bunch of different questions. And so for the Ouija board and the monkey paw, you can go over to your um, your settings, go to your game settings and change your voice recognition mode to text. And now you have a list. Uh, get, well, hold on. Let me do this. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, let's do, oops, change this to text. Goes turned off the freaking breaker again. All right, so with the Ouija board, if you change 
your voice recognition mode to text, you will have um, to where you can ask a question, right? Um, so you can ask things like, where are you? Where is the bone? Do you speak to everyone, etc." For sanity, you can ask, am I insane? How sane am I? Uh, you can ask miscellaneous questions like hide and seek. That will um, trigger a cursed hunt. How old are you is useful for ghosts like the Thay, which ages the longer the player is close to it. Um, you can ask, how do you die? Um, but the thing to know is a couple things. And while I explain this, we're going to get a new contract because I just broke the Ouija board. But Ouija board I'm not a huge fan of because to ask a question, it costs sanity. Uh, the two main questions that are like useful which costs the most are uh, where are you and where's the bone, okay? It was a phantom, which would explain why it kept following me around. Let's go back to Tanglewood and grab the board. The questions like where are you and where are the bone uh, cost 50% sanity, all right? With the, with the board, if you don't have enough sanity to ask it a question or once you hit zero sanity, the board will do what you just saw where it will break and when the board breaks, a cursed hunt will happen. Okay? So we're gonna go grab the board again and try again. Um, but one thing I will say that is very, very, very important, which I can actually demonstrate this, is if you're walking away from the board, make sure to always say goodbye, otherwise a cursed hunt will happen. But, so you have, where are you, where's the bone? Those who cost 50% sanity, do you speak to everyone? I'm not sure how much sanity that costs. Your sanity questions, I wouldn't even bother, bro, because am I insane gives you a very vague yes, no, or maybe. There's no definitive. Um, how sane am I is a little bit more specific, but it's like very sane or like healthy, unhealthy, and insane or something like that. That cost, I think, 20% sanity. Um, let's see, you've got hide and seek, which again, triggers a hunt. I don't think that that's going to be a cursed hunt. It could be, but I'm not entirely sure. How old are you? Cost sanity. I think it's 20%. How did you die? Cost sanity as well. Um, everything costs sanity. All right. So if you're wanting to, uh, find out where the ghost is, uh, another reason why you shouldn't use, where are you is because the answer is the ghost location, not the ghost room, okay? So it will say something like the boy's bedroom or whatever on Tanglewood, and it's actually the dining room is, is the ghost room, okay? So what you can do is you can uh, grab the board and go around to each room and ask a question like, how many people are in this room? So for instance, I can do, let me change this to windows, and then I'll show you. How many people are in this room? So we have one. So this is not the ghost room. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. If we go over to the kitchen and we drop it and we click on it, how many people are in this room? How many people are in this room? We have one. Now, watch whenever I don't say goodbye and I walk away from the board. The board breaks and a cursed hunt begins. Uh, that was just kind of weird timing because it was it was doing a ghost event just then, which is why it stopped. But yeah, so that is the Ouija board. It's it's not really the low key, bro. The only thing that it's useful for is finding the bone or finding the ghost room. Um, but even then, it the the cost of sanity is just it's it's stupid, bro. Okay. Um, Let's move on to the next cursed possession, which is the tarot cards. So the tarot cards, there are 10 total tarot cards, all right? Of those 10, there is a random chance of, of getting it on whatever deck you have for that contract, all right? Uh, so I'm just gonna pull all 10 and I'll explain. So you, we have the sun. The sun gives you 100% sanity no matter what. The hermit. Okay, that was the full. Okay, the full literally does nothing. It will it will show as one card and then immediately change to the full. There's no effect. You don't need to worry about that. The devil triggers a ghost event. Okay, um, and that can be all the way down to like an air ball. 
Okay, so that was the tower into the fool. So let me go back. So the first fool card we have was the hermit into the fool. The hermit locks the ghost in its ghost room. The tower is actually bugged because it's supposed to give an interaction, but it, it doesn't, okay? Uh, so the hermit and the tower card are the two most useless cards in the tarot card deck uh, that you can get, but they're also the most common cards that you can get. So, you know, fun times, all right? The devil, again, triggers a ghost, a ghost event. We had an air ball right there. Death triggers a curse taunt. Now, again, because my settings have friendly ghosts turned on because I don't want to be interrupted. Um, did, we didn't get a curse hunt right there, but under normal circumstances, that's going to be a curse hunt. It's not a regular hunt. It's a curse hunt. Next, we have the moon. The moon is opposite of the sun, obviously. So if the sun gives you 100% sanity, what does the moon do? Say it with me. 0% sanity. So now I am at 0% sanity. The wheel of fortune will either... We just saw it turn red right there whenever it disintegrated. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune will either give or take 25% sanity. So I was already at zero sanity. It flashed red, so, you know. But if it if it flashes green, it's um, it gives you 25% sanity. If it flashes red, it takes away 25% sanity. The tower, the full, okay. Well, that's just rude. And then last but not least, we have the tower, okay? Um, let me go back to the lobby so I can explain. I'll just leave. Let me go back to the lobby so I can explain the last remaining cards. All right, so if you come over here, not there, you have all the cards. So you have the Fool, which we covered. You have uh, this one right here is the Hermit. That's the one that locks the ghost in the ghost room. The moon removes all of your sanity. Will of Fortune either gives or takes 25% sanity. The tower card triggers an interaction it's supposed to, but it's it's bugged. Sun, 100% sanity. The devil card triggers a ghost event, even an air ball. Uh, the death card triggers a cursed hunt. The high priestess and the hangman are the two most rare cards that you can get. So the hangman is very easy. It's also the rarest card. It's got a 1% chance of being pulled, but it instantly kills the user of the tarot card. That's it. Um, the high priestess is opposite it revives the last killed player and i i think i know in multiplayer if nobody has has been killed yet when somebody dies it will then revive them okay uh the cards don't stack though that's so if by some miracle you pull two two high priestesses back to back it will and you get revived once and you die again it will revive the next killed player if that makes sense um, the only thing that I'm curious about that I want to test myself is because I play a lot of solo contracts, does this work in solo? So if I pull a tarot card and I pull a high priestess, I'm curious if the ghost hunts me and I die, will this still count? Will I be revived or does it only work in multiplayer? If it only worked in multiplayer, that's understandable, but that would be, that kind of sucks, but it's fine. Um, so that is the tarot cards, man. They're very easy to understand. It just sucks that two of them are probably really, really useless, but it is what it is. Now, last but not least, we're going to cover the most in-depth curse possession in the game. So you're going to want to take your notepads out, bro, because this, this right here is the monkey paw, and it is very... It's not hard to understand. It's just got a lot to it. It's got a lot to it. Like I'm, I typed out my notes here and it's like two pages worth of notes. So I'm just going to run. I'm just going to run through it. Okay. So first and foremost, the monkey paw, treat it like a genie in a bottle. All right. You get, you get a set number of wishes, but that depends on the type, like the, the difficulty multiplier. So if you are on zero, if your multiplier is between zero and one, 1 1.99, you get five wishes. 2 to 2.99 you get 4 and anything 3 times and higher you only get 3 wishes all right those wishes are split into three categories you've got the ghost player and other okay so starting with the ghost you can and this is the same thing as a Ouija board you can go here and let me drop this real quick you can go and change your voice recognition mode to text and it will show you a list of 
the ghosts, right? Or the uh, the the wishes you can make. You've got I, I wish to be safe. I wish to be sane. Um, and all of this other stuff. I'll explain this. So uh, you've got I wish to see the ghost. All right. So what that does is it uh, causes a ghost event at the ghost location. Um, the player will be visually affected, and after five seconds, a cursed hunt will be triggered. All right. You have I wish for activity which is you can also if you're saying it out loud you can also say i wish the ghost would do something activity for from the ghost is doubled for two minutes but the trade-off is that it breaks the box breaks the fuse box for the rest of the contract like permanently there there that's it um let's see i wish to trap the ghost or i wish the ghost was trapped this is the one that i use the most um and it's very helpful for finding the the uh the ghost room the only caveat is that it locks the ghost in the ghost room for 60 seconds and it also locks the doors of whatever room you're in for 60 seconds as well after that 60 second period a cursed hunt will happen all right the workaround to this is twofold all right so you can wish to trap the ghost or wish the ghost was trapped and you can be in an open room like this where there's no doors all right so if that's the case it will lock the the room of of the ghost but you'll be fine and then you can go over here and just go out to the truck for like 60 seconds um and wait and then once that 60 seconds is up you can come back inside and check for the doors and the ghost room will have a lock symbol on it similar to when you first walk into the front door of a map okay um so you got that going for you uh, let's see here. Moving on to the player category, you have I wish to be to be sane. If you are saying this verbally, you need to say I wish for sanity because sometimes with the voice recognition, instead of it hearing you say I wish to be sane, it will use the wish I wish to be safe, which I will explain in a minute. So I wish to be sane, very simple. It sets your sanity to 50%. So it's very useful if you're at 0% sanity and you want sanity, uh, it'll take your sanity from zero to 50%. However, the trade-off is that your passive sanity drain is increased to a one and a half times multiplier of whatever the contract sanity drain is, if that makes sense. So if you're at 200% sanity drain, it'll be like, uh, what is that? It'll be 300% or something? I'm bad at math, but yeah. Um, and on top of that, using this wish causes the ghost room to be changed to a random room, even if it's a Gorio, okay? Because the Gorio never changes ghost rooms, all right? I wish to be safe, un unblocks the nearest blocked hiding spot. Uh, however, the trade-off is that the lights in the current room will break, what, like whatever room you're, you're using the monkey paw in, that, that room's lights will break permanently and the ghost will be able to hear and detect you <clears throat> from any distance for the rest of the contract. Um, and that that even applies to if you're on like a different floor from the ghost, the ghost can still detect you, all right? You have I wish to leave, which is the other um, wish that I use a lot, where um, it unlocks the front door, but the trade-off is that for five seconds, it like, visually alters you so like for instance i can go here and do i wish to leave and you see how it makes everything dark but it also makes you incredibly slow for five seconds so there you go um let's see last but not least you have the um the other category which is i wish to revive my friend all right this is pretty self-explanatory but there's a little twist to it so I wish to revive my friend or I wish for life um, revives the uh, revives a dead a dead player but there's a 50% chance that if you're the one wishing for it you could die too okay so it, it revives the most recently killed player or something like that but there's a 50% chance your life is taken in exchange for it if that makes sense I wish for knowledge that um, removes one incorrect piece of evidence associated and uh, any ghosts associated with that evidence. Okay, so if, if it's not freezing temperature, all of these will be 
blacked out, okay? So for instance, I wish for knowledge. It'll make your, it'll make your game not only look like darker, but it turns down the volume, okay? And then it also triggers a curse taunt too, um, but the um, the curse taunt will start closer to you rather than like the ghost room. And this effect will last until either you die or the end of the contract, all right? Um, so, but you see how it's blacked out all the ghosts that isn't associated with UV. So there you go. Um, and then last but not least, we have we have two left here. Uh, one is I wish for weather. That's very easy. You got weather one, weather two, or you could just go with um, fog, rain, snow, sun, or clear. Um, however, what it does is it obviously changes the weather, but it blinds you temporarily. It costs 25% sanity, and this is the only wish with the monkey paw that you cannot use if you are below 25% sanity. The other thing to know is if you wish for rain, there's a 50-50 50, a 50 chance it will either give you light rain or heavy rain, okay? Um, which can be a pretty big deal if you're having a hard time hearing the ghost. Um, and then last but not least, uh, which isn't on this list, but you can wish for anything, all right? So that's that. Um, so yeah, again, as I said it at the start of this, the monkey paw and the tarot cards are the only two con or c only two curse possessions that you can use at 0% sanity. Um, they don't cost sanity to use or anything like that. Um, the monkey paw has a couple nuances, and the monkey paw is the only um, the only wish with the curse possession with the monkey paw is that uh, that you can't use if you're below twenty five percent sanity. Is I wish for weather, but let's be honest, bro. Who's gonna use that? Like literally, I, I only use a monkey paw for um, finding the ghost room. So like wishing the ghost was trapped and wishing for sanity and that's that's pretty much it so the other thing to note is obviously because people have tried to braid the game before stepping outside of the of the house or map wherever uh you cannot use any of the cursed possessions i mean that's it's i mean that kind of makes sense but that's pretty much it so there's that so that is all the cursed possessions explained all right um let me give a quick tldr all right, so the mirror shows the ghost room costs minimum of 20% sanity. All right, voodoo doll, 10 pins, one heart pin. The other nine pins trigger interaction. The heart pin triggers a cursed hunt and each pin costs 5% sanity to use. All right, summoning circle. There's five candles. Each candle costs 16% um, sanity. When you light all five, the ghost will appear and stay there for five seconds and then trigger a cursed hunt. Um, if you don't have enough sanity to light the summoning circle, the candle will light and immediately go out. All right. The music box is useful for finding the ghost room, getting a ghost event, uh, and obviously triggering a cursed hunt. It is important to know that you lose two and a half percent sanity per second when you are within two and a half meters of the music box. And it is also important to know that you must place it. Do not drop the music box. Otherwise, it will break and it will cause a cursed hunt. The monkey paw, we just covered it, but there's a lot of it. it yeah, you can use it at 0% sanity aside from wishing for weather. But just use text as your voice recognition and you can see all the different types of uh, uh, wishes that you can do. Ouija board, don't even waste your time with it, bro. It's it, Each question costs sanity. And the two most important ones, where's the bone and where are you, um, cost 50% sanity each. And where are you only shows the ghost location, not the ghost room. Um, and so everything else costs like, I think, 20% sanity. Um, and if you don't say goodbye after you're done asking a question and go to walk away, the board will break and it will cause a cursed hunt. If you don't have enough sanity to ask the question, the board will break and it will cause a cursed hunt. Um, Tarot cards, there's 10 of them. I've already explained these, but um, the Tower card and the Hermit card are the two most common. The Tower card is allegedly bugged right now. The Hermit um, is pretty much useless. Um, the High Priestess and Hangman are the two most rarest cards that you can get. Um, but yeah, you can use the Tarot cards at 0% sanity. 
Um, so that is the TLDR of the cursed possessions. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into each map and show you the spawn location of every single cursed possession. So let's start out with Tanglewood. All right, so we are in Tanglewood, and this is where all of the cursed possessions spawn. I'm running at hyperspeed so we can just break this all down. First and foremost, the mirror spawns right here next to the master bedroom. The music box spawns in the nursery next to the stuffed animal that giggles. All right. You have tarot cards in the living room on this little like side table. The monkey paw spawns in this uh, china cabinet. In the garage, you have the voodoo doll that spawns right here on this trash can. And down in the basement, you have the last two, which is the summoning circle, which is right here. And then back here is the Ouija board. So that is Tanglewood. All right, so we're on Edgefield. And I'll show you where all the cursed possessions spawn. So when you first walk in, you have the music box sitting here uh, in the living room on this uh, like drawer thing. Uh, you have tarot cards right next to the car key. The mirror spawns right here next to the, the coat hangers and the tarot cards. Um, in the laundry room, you have the Ouija board. And then, let me see here. I just did a refresher on all the maps not too long ago, so. Down in the basement, you have the summoning circle, which is right here. And then upstairs, the monkey paw and the voodoo doll spawn. So in the nursery here, so this, this room right here, you have the monkey paw. And then in the back right bedroom on this hallway is where the voodoo doll spawns. So I kind of like Edgefield because three out of the seven are like all right here. But that's Edgefield. Okay, so now on Ridgeview, you have, when you first walk in, you've got tarot cards right next to the car keys. You've got the mirror that spawns right here. In the utility room right here, you have the Ouija board. The voodoo doll spawns right here. I don't think anything spawns in here, no. The voodoo doll spawns right next to the piano. Down in the basement, obviously you have the summoning circle. Let's see here. Upstairs. In this bedroom, the first bedroom on the left, you have the music box. And... Where's the monkey paw again? I think it's right here. So, at the top of the stairs, if you go right, the first bedroom on the right, on the desk, there's the monkey paw. Alright, up next we have Grafton Farmhouse. So if you walk in... The mirror spawns right here. You have... In the laundry room here... Absolutely nothing. So the mirror spawns over there. In this back room, usually where the fuse box is, you have the Ouija board. If you walk across to the twin bedroom, this one's a little tricky, but over here on the axe, you have the monkey paw. Okay. Let's see. The tarot cards are immediately when you walk in to the left here on this table. And then upstairs. Back here in the attic is where the summoning circle is. And then if you walk across to the bedroom, you have the voodoo doll sitting here in the, like, baby room or whatever. Okay? So that's Grafton. I almost completely forgot to uh, show you the music box, uh, but uh, it's literally right here as soon as you walk in. Uh, it can spawn on one of these shelves, but it's right here in the foyer. Yeah. All right, now we are on Willow Street. <clears throat> Well, this street's actually one of the easier ones. 
because everything is like in pretty close proximity. Like for instance, when you first walk in, the music box is going to be on the same table as a card key. The tarot cards are going to be right here on this coffee table, or like side table. Um, the monkey paw is going to be in this bookshelf. And then if you walk in the garage, there's two spawns in this back room. You have the Ouija board on the washer and dryer, and then the mirror in this back corner. Sometimes This is a hiding spot. Sometimes this won't be here, so it'll be really easy to see. Um, the summoning circle is obviously in the basement. And that's going to be right here. Hello, ghost. And then for the voodoo doll, in this room the bone in this cabinet you have this stuffed animal if you open the door there's the voodoo doll okay so that's that's willow street so i'll do bleasdale which is this one and then uh camp woodwind and that'll cover all the small maps and then we'll go like medium and large all right so on bleasdale when you walk in to this room you have tarot cards right here and the mirror right here. So in this first room on the left is the tarot cards and mirror. If you come to the workshop, the Ouija board will be right here on this workbench. And then if you go upstairs, let me see if I remember correctly. In this room, you have the monkey paw sitting on this wardrobe between the crib and this chair. So if you come upstairs, first bedroom on the right, the monkey paw will be in here. Um, if you come upstairs, the summoning circle's up here, obviously. So in the living room, on this table next to the phone, the music box spawns. That goes outside. So for the voodoo doll, you come upstairs, go past the attic stairs, in this chair is the voodoo doll, okay? That's Bleasdale. Okay, so on the final small map, Camp Woodwind, this is the smallest map in the game. You have the tarot card sitting right here. The mirror is kind of hidden by these bushes, but you have the mirror here. Over here, you have the summoning circle. Here in the game's tent, you have the... Do you mind? Um, you have the Ouija board. But if you come around back to the, I guess, yoga area or whatever. You have the monkey paw right here. The music box is gonna be in the yellow tent. And the voodoo doll, the quest to find the voodoo doll is right here. All right, so next to the red tent, you have the voodoo doll. It's, it's right next to the monkey paw, essentially. So that is Camp Woodwind. All right, so now we're moving on to the medium maps. Um, and then we'll finish with the large maps. Uh, you'll notice that Sunny Meadows and Sunny Meadows Restricted are going to be the same. I'm not going to go do two separate because they're the exact same cursed possession spawns, okay? Um, but right now we're on prison. Now, don't get it twisted. The devs actually did us a favor by not scattering the cursed possessions all over the map, aside from Maple Lodge. Um, but on your bigger maps like prison, uh, Brownstone High School as Sunny Meadows all three of those the cursed possessions, cursed possessions are going to be like all together in one room so for instance on prison when you walk in everything is going to be in this room right here so you have the music box in this black bin the voodoo dolls in between the two bins the tarot cards is in this gray bin the monkey paws right here next to the gray bin you come around to the other side of the table you have the Ouija board over here, underneath these seats, you have the cursed mirror, and then the summoning circle is right here. And that's literally prison. That's it. Next meeting map, we have uh, Maple Lodge Campsite, which is a bigger version of Camp Woodwind. The spawns are not the same as Camp Woodwind, though. You gotta know that. Alright? And it took me forever to find everything because I never play this map. Um, so first and foremost, the easiest one is going to be here in the cabin. The mirror is going to spawn right there. One thing I did notice whenever I was finding the cursed possessions here, uh, there's a cool little Easter egg that I'll that I'll share here in a minute. Okay, so let's see. The voodoo doll is going to be K 
campsite A, right here next to the acoustic guitar. Very nice. Very good sound. From there, you come to the ladder, and you come into this closet here. You have the Ouija board. Here in campsite B, I believe this is what this is, uh, at this campfire, you have the music box sitting on the sump next to the red thermos. And then if we come back here, if you go to the table that has all the playing cards, that's where the tarot cards are. I'll show you where the summoning circle is here in a minute, but I saw this really cool Easter egg. I'm pretty sure it's been seen before, but you see the bubbles? Watch. Jason mask. Freaking sick, dude. Okay. So if you come into the, uh, I guess, this other cabin, which you have to pick up the key for, which is right here next to the welcome mat, and you come inside right here, the summoning circle is going to be in here. And then I think... I think that covers... Everything except monkey paw, which is gonna be... I thought it was inside here for some reason, but it's not. Monkey paw is a little bit hard to find on this map. If you don't know where you're... If you don't know exactly where it is. And it's right in front of me. So, let's run it back. So you have... You got the Jason mask over there, right? Summoning circles in this cabin. And then if you come back around, you go through the staff thingy, it's right here on this barrel. So next to like the storage tent, it's going to be right here, okay? So that is Maple Lodge. Okay, sorry about that, Maple Lodge took a, took a second because I had a brain fart on where the monkey paw spawned. Um, so now we are on Brownstone High School. And this is just like prison. It's it's very easy, okay? So when you first walk in, everything is going to be in this room, all right? So right here, you have the monkey paw. Over here on this bench, you have the tarot cards. Over here on this bench, underneath the graffiti, you have the music box. Um, right here is the summoning circle, and then you have the Ouija board and the mirror, and it's all right here, okay? That is, that's, that's brownstone, brother. Oh, and, and the voodoo doll is right up here, okay? So that's, that's brownstone. Everything is literally right here. Bam, 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 and a bam, okay? Last but not least is Sunny Meadows, and this will be a two for one. This both applies for Sunny Meadows regular and Sunny Meadows restricted, okay? It's not hard at all, my dude. Fortunately, the developers actually love us, so they didn't make it hard. So what you do is when you first walk in, you want to come through these two double doors and then you want to come into the chapel. All right. Up on stage is where all of the cursed possessions can spawn. All right. So you have the summoning circle in the middle. You've got tarot cards here, mirror, monkey paw, voodoo doll, music box, and Ouija board. And this applies for both Sunny Meadows and Sunny Meadows Restricted. All right. So it's, it's, it's that easy, my friend. Um, so that is that so with that said i really hope this guide helped you um at least if anything helped you figure out where all the cursed possessions spawn on every single map because i see a lot of cursed possession guides where they talk about the cursed possessions in depth but they don't tell you where they spawn on every map and i know that was the biggest struggle for me of like trying to figure out where they all spawn but now that you know where they all spawn it'll help your games be a lot more enjoyable because like i said the curse possessions are a great tool for figuring out the ghost room um figuring out what type of ghost you're dealing with through the hunts that it can bring you uh getting a ghost photo via the ghost events etc etc and honestly just a great way to like troll your friends because you can do like tarot card roulette um you can run off with the curse possession and like trigger a curse hunt without telling your friends so it's a great way to to just add um I guess, enjoyment and fun into the game on top of providing value as well. So uh, do me a favor. If you did enjoy this video, um, give me a like. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Um, and tell me what 
curse possession you you didn't know that much about um and what part of this video helped you the most uh, down in the comments i would greatly appreciate that if you want to find your way back for more content make sure to hit the subscribe button with notifications on if you want to come check me out live i do stream on twitch you can uh, find a link for that down in the description it's twitch.tv slash koozie and uh yeah so do me a favor hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for watching and as always don't stop being who you are you're valued you are loved you belong in this community and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Take care.